UV is now a single tool to replace PIP, PIP tools, PIPX, Poetry, Pion, Virtualenv and more. With the release of 0.3.0, which came out last week, we got a whole bunch more tooling and all with that huge speed up that we get uh, with the underlying Rust implementation that it uses. So I'm going to show you a couple of the examples in this video of how you can just use UV over and above all these other tools that uh, exist in Python already. So the first thing we want to do is install it. Uh, there's already been a whole bunch of point releases since it was put out last week. It's all the way up to um, 0.3.4. I think the last one came out 10 hours ago. If I look at the version that I have installed, I'm on 3.3. I'm just going to paste in that astral um, scripts. You should always check out scripts before you run them. We're just going to run that straight off the back because I trust them. And we're getting this 3.0.3.4 release. So the first thing we want to do when we start a Python project is make sure we've got the right version of Python installed. We can see the versions of Python that we got with UV Python command, UV Python list in this case. You can see we've got a whole load available. We've got one downloaded. Um, we haven't got the latest installed, so let's go ahead and do that. We can do that with um, UV Python install. And it just goes ahead and installed that. That's been cached and is stored locally. And it's just installing the default latest version there when we use UV Python install. If we were to put a version number after that, we could install a particular version. Um, something we want to do is just run an example script. So let's say we create a script in this directory. So you can just do uv run example py and that will use the default version that we've just installed. Um, we could do something a bit more complicated and actually put a dependency in there. So here we're using requests. Obviously if we try and run that now, it's just going to say there's no module requests in there. So if we want to run that script with requests, we can do uv run dash dash with. And so what it's done there, we've just defined that we're using requests on the command line. It's created a virtual environment and it's run that script. And you see we get a response back from the astral page from requests. We could, in fact, update that script uh, so that it uses something known as an inline dependency, which is like a new feature that I hadn't heard of uh, until recently. So if you do uv add example.py requests then it's defined within the script itself and then when we do uv run again example.py you can see that it's in read the inline script metadata it's picked up that it needs to use requests it's using the virtual env that it's already got and it goes off and runs that script quite happily so that's basic kind of script execution if we move on to say a project so typically when I'd be doing that, the script execution, I'd have to define projects because actually um, in order to correctly include requests in that case, I want it in a folder that has correct metadata for that particular example. If we do uv init in this directory, you can see that we've created a pyproject.toml, uh, a readme, an example, and we've already got the example of the py. We've also got a script that just says hello from UV. Um, I'm actually going to slightly change this metadata here. So if we change it with name on the end, in fact, let's delete this because I don't think it will allow me to create it again. I'm going to define it UV tutorial. And then we look at that and the project name is UV tutorial. So I can just go merrily away and add, say, a dependency that's put flask in this flak. Don't want to add flak. Add flask. Okay, cool. So it hasn't added it in the first bit. Add flask. Now it's all those dependencies in that directory. 
um, you'll see that it, we also get the UV lock file that gives you the explicit dependencies, 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 um, and all the particular version numbers that they use. So if we take the basic example from the Flask page, from the Flask home page, and go ahead and run that, we can just do UV run um, Flask. Hello, run. We've actually got a script called hello, we've got a script called example. And then that's obviously working. Got our hello world script. So you can see that it's installed dependencies in a virtual environment. It's within this virtual environment here. It's visible within directory, so it's putting it in a subdirectory within the project. So by default, we don't have to define that we want to use subdirectory that we might have to do with a different package manager. It just takes that as the default. That's typically how I work. We can also remove those dependencies if you wanted to. So UV remove flask. Let's remove that from the Pi project tunnel. And we're obviously not going to be able to run if we do it now because there's no um, Flask module now installed. So another thing I didn't mention is that you could pin the Python version as well. So you can do UV Python pin 3.125, and we'll get the Python version file that you would normally see with like use with PyEnv or something like that. And it's written out there, the Py project toml, it's already got that in there. So um, yeah, that's really handy as well. So final kind of example, we talk about tools. So tools are things that can be installed or run with their own virtual environments. Uh, you can get to them through UV tool. Um, and we can list all those ones that are installed. So I have one which is called posting at this point. And they're also aliased to UVX, which is quite handy. So similar to, um, so UVX like that. Um, similar to how you might use pipx, you can just install a tool so that it will run on the command line. So if you want to install something globally, you can do uv tool install. Um, posting in this case is already installed. If I want to run that, I can do uvx posting. And I can just do and run that quite happily. So HTTPS google.com, as you might expect, works. So when we're doing this, we're basically creating a virtual environment for that tool. All the tools dependencies are installed into that virtual environment. When we run it again, it uses that virtual environment, um, which is cached. Those uh, virtual environments can be removed if you want to. If you install it into a global one, they're not removed. Um, they're not temporary virtual environments, they stay on the system. So we also get this concept of workspaces in um, UVX, in UV, sorry, which allow us to create complex packages that consist of other um, packages, smaller packages, um, as you can see here. So we can have multiple Py project tomals in the same project. So kind of like a, I guess, a mono repo. Um, where we're working on multiple projects in there. I'm not going to get into that here. Uh, and the other thing to say is that we can publish packages, but it's not a built-in tool in U UV. It's, you have to use Build and Twine or whatever tools that you're using for that from UV. So yeah, I thought this was a really interesting development on UV. It's really exciting that we now have like a one-stop shop potentially to point new um, developers towards. Lots of people advocating that we should go this route and I saw that Armin Ronico has obviously built the Rise stuff um, that this is based on from the team at Astral has been advocating for it. Also saw that Sebastian Ramirez has already put it into the Fast API doc so if you take a look at that. So if we take a look at the Fast API doc here we can see that already within here we've got a UV example. This is actually a really good intro to virtual environments if you haven't looked at it before. Um, 
but this is kind of exciting. It's really exciting that they're putting out these releases so quickly. Um, we've had four releases in the last week, patch releases. So there's a lot of development going on here. I'm really interested to see how this gets ad adopted. Like, uh, it looks like it's going to be a winner for um, Python developers. And I'm going to be using it on um, future projects, definitely, to manage my stuff. So, yeah. Uh, until next time, I'll speak to you soon. All right, bye for now. Bye.